didn't go into any details. So I don't know what. Yeah. <laughs> she likes that name.
between. Oh, how sweet to walk in this pilgrim's way, leaning on the everlasting arm. Oh, how bright the path grows from day to day, leaning on the everlasting arm. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all along. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. Last one. What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms. I have blessed peace with my Lord so near. On the everlasting arms, leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms, leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. And you can be seated. changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yes, Amen. The same God that helped you 20 years ago still helping you today. Sure. And we'll be helping you 20 years and further in the future. All the way. All right. Let's take some prayer requests. If anybody would like to mention a few, feel free to do so. Jerry, just say it's just for, the, for our family. Okay. The salvation is Sir Jerry, I'm sure we'll be praying for that. Um, I know Pauline said this morning her and Lewis both in a pretty big storm right now, so let's pray for them. Pauline Lewis Taylor, of course, uh, Calvin and Judy, and I think uh, was it Calvin's cousin that had passed away? I believe uh, Linda said over here one of Judy's best friends. So pray for that situation. Anyone else want to mention on today? Hazel Curry. Hazel Curry's birth. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. I always pray for Hazel and Curry's birth. What a fine couple they are. Okay. How about unspoken? Unspoken. All right. Bobby doing okay today, Jackie? Probably up with pain, 
because he has to get up three or four times a night with uh, his shingles. He's had these shingles over 20, what, 24 years now, something like that. 22. 22 years. That's a long time to have shingles. And I mean, doctors and all tried everything you could think of, nothing has helped. And uh, so he doesn't get much rest at night. So if you wake up in the middle of the night, pray for Jackie. God will touch him and give him some rest. And uh, everybody else, pray for everybody else too. Amen. Amen. Everybody needs prayer. All right. Anybody else want to mention one tonight? Anybody else? Let's keep Jim in our prayers. Uh, he said he was not feeling too well this evening, and so we just need to keep him uplifted. David's got a birthday coming up. and got some cake back there. I think everybody ought to get a piece of that cake tonight. Amen. Amen. Just kidding, David. That's your cake. All right. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer then. Remember all these different ones. Uh, we've got another one over here. Yes. Martha, let's pray for the Lord to send us somebody here to work with you. Okay. And send us some heat to be able to work with That's you. That's what we need to do. We need to do that. Yeah. Pray God will send us the youth director and the youth, and we need to build the youth up in this church. That's yeah. true. That's true. We need to really work with them and get them involved. Okay, well, let's go to the Lord in prayer then. Joe, would you lead us today as we start our service? Our time is very Heavenly Father. Thank you for the chance to have the Savior for this week. Thank you for all the blessings you've given us. Pray that you listen to us and show us our steps. Pray that you'll heal our bodies, that you'll heal our hearts. Be with the family, have some love this evening. Thank you for all of us that are in the hospital, for all of us that have COVID. Also, don't want to forget about Jackie and Ronnie Pew. Uh, they woke up real sick this morning. Not sure if it's COVID or not. Haven't heard any more from them. But uh, let's pray they'll feel better real soon. Okay. Uh, no outstanding announcements other than we're signing up, and hopefully in the next two weeks we'll try to get an organizational meeting for the choir and get that started each Sunday. I love to hear the choir sing, don't you? something about here in the choir. And so if you want to make a joyful noise unto the Lord, sign up there in the back. I believe that'll take care of the announcements for tonight. Sure did enjoy that trip yesterday. I appreciate Willa May and all she did to organize it. That's a lot of work she put into that. And even brought drinks and snacks and everything else that several others did. We had a great time. Randy had to run through those uh, hurricanes to get us back home, but thank God we got back home. Amen. And I was glad to see Grace Baptist here. All right, let's go ahead and take the offering up then. Uh, Jerry, do you want to come and help us? And uh, Bobby, you up to it tonight? Okay, Bobby's had a knife surgery. Keep him in prayers. All right. Jerry, will you lead us in prayer? Father, I come to you tonight in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Hey, Lord, I'd like to thank you most of all for him dying on the cross so that we know we have the home in heaven, Lord, an eternal home that would be more and better than this place we're in now, Lord. Hey, Amen. Lord, thank you for the many blessings you see fit to give us. Thank you for your <clears throat> thank you for all that you do for us, Lord. Lord, let us be good steward for this offering. Thank you for what you do with it. You praise, honor, and glory of your name. Of course, in your name I ask. Amen.
all the way back in the back of your Bible. How many here are dogs? You like dogs better than cats. Anybody like dogs better than cats? Okay. Anybody like cats better than dogs? Okay, I figured there was a few the other way. Heard this story, I thought it was pretty good. It was this cat, and he was always being chased by dogs, and he finally passed away and went to heaven. And old St. Peter met him at the gate. Told him, said, man, I've had a rough life. I've had just terrible times down on earth. I've been chased by dogs and wild animals. I'm telling you the truth. I need some help up here in heaven. And he said, well, we're going to fix you up. You come right on in here, and we're going to put you in a bed. Give you a bed from heaven. And he laid down in that bed like cats do and snuggled up. And boy, that cat felt so good in that bed. Well, about two weeks later, there were six mice. These six mice were always being harassed by ladies with brooms in their hands and by cats trying to catch them, and they always running here and running there. And so when they died, all six of them, tragically in an accident, standing at the pearly gates, told St. Peter, we really had a rough time down on earth. I'll tell you what, they've been chasing us down there since we were born, trying to kill us. And we've uh, dodged dogs and cats, and we've had to run from all kinds of critters, and we just need some rest, and we need something that will help us to be able to move around a little better, because well, our legs are just flat wore out. Well, old St. Peter said, I know just the answer. So he gave every one of those mice a pair of roller skates. He said, anywhere you want to go in heaven, all you got to do is roller skate around. Boy, you'll have it made up here, eh? They thought, well, that's great. And they put those roller skates on. Sure enough, they was doing all kinds of tricks, and going backwards and forwards, and roller skating all over heaven. Well, about two weeks after that, Peter came by and saw the cat. That cat was laying there in that bed just as snug as a bug, you know, in a rug. And he just looked at him and he said, how do you like it in heaven? That cat said, I love it up here. He said, how you liking your bed that I gave you? He said, this is the best bed I've ever laid in. I've been resting and sleeping better than I ever did on earth, and I just want to personally thank you for that bed, Peter. And he said, also, I want to thank you for those meals on wheels you sent by the other day. Boy, they sure were good. <laughs> Watch out. All right, moving on to serious things here. Uh, I want to entitle the message today, what kind of a Christian are you? There's three different types of church members. We're going to take a look at them tonight in these three characters. We'll pick it up in verse number one, the elder, that would be John, unto the well-beloved Gaius, that's the first character, whom I love in the truth. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. For I rejoiced greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee. Even as thou walkest in the truth, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in the truth. Beloved, thou doest faithfully whatsoever thou doest to the brethren and to the strangers, which have borne witness of the charity before the church, whom if thou bring forward on their journey after a godly sword, thou shalt do well. Because that for his name's sake, they went forth taking nothing of the Gentiles. That would be for the sake of Christ. These traveling evangelists would move around, and people would let them come to their homes. The Christian people would, and stay while they were ministering in their churches. Then in verse number 8, kind of like a prophet's chamber. We went down to Trinity Baptist Church years ago in Jacksonville, Florida. Three of us, and we were looking at the school, looking at the college there and uh, anticipating, praying about going to that Bible college. They put us all three in what's known as prophets chambers. And that was really nice. And that's what they do for their visiting guests. And so that's kind of what they did. They didn't have prophets chambers in the churches because they met in houses but they opened their homes up to the traveling evangelists and the traveling preachers to come in. So he says in verse number 8, we therefore ought to receive such that we might be fellow helpers to the truth. So it's a good thing you're receiving them. It's also helping them and helping the church and helping the ministry. Then verse number nine, I wrote unto the church, but Diotrephes, he's the second one, 
who loveth to have the preeminence. He has to be the leader. Among them, he receiveth us not. Could you believe that this man wouldn't even receive the apostle John? This man didn't even receive the man that probably started that church. Verse number 10, Wherefore, if I come, I will remember his deeds which he doeth, pratting against us with malicious words, and not content therewith. Neither doth he himself receive the brethren, and forbiddeth them that would, and casteth them out of the church. Beloved, fellow, uh, beloved, follow not that which is evil, but that which is good. He that doeth good is of God, but he that doeth evil hath not seen God. And here's the third Christian, Demetrius. He has a good report of all men and of the truth itself. Yea, and we also bear record. And ye know that our record is true. I have many things to write, but I will not with ink and pen write unto thee. But I trust that I shall shortly see thee, and we shall speak face to face. Peace be to thee. Our friends salute thee. Greet the friends by name. So let's go to the Lord in prayer on the message tonight. What kind of a Christian are we? Father, we ask tonight that you would take the message applied into our hearts. That Lord, that we would be that Christian that would be a shining light in a dark world. Father, thank you for everyone that came out tonight to be here. The Sunday night service. Lord, we ask your presence to be with us. Go from heart to heart, pew to pew, and God, just take over. And Lord, let's fill us with your Holy Spirit. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We have three different church members in this third epistle of John. There's Gaius, there's Diotrephes, and there's Demetrius. Now these are not names you would give your son today. <laughs> but in biblical days, they were very common names. And there's a term used in the first verse, the elder unto the well-beloved Gaius. And that was the apostle John. In the, old, in the New Testament day, they had three different descriptions of the same office. Sometimes they called them pastor, one who feeds the flock of God, the word of God. Uh, at other times, they're referred to as a bishop. He's an overseer of the whole church, an administrator. And then there's the elder. Sometimes they're referred to as the elder, the mature one, the counselor. So John is the elder. He's writing to Gaius. And he's described him as well-beloved. Well-beloved. Now, when you read in verse number one, to the well-beloved Gaius, whom I love in the truth. We don't really know much about Gaius. Uh, they had different names. There were others who had that name. But we don't know that much about this one. Believers are God's beloved ones because of what Jesus Christ did on Calvary's cross. We could say that name applies to all of us. We're beloved in the sight of God. He looks down upon us and has mercy and grace and washes our sin and saves us and thank God makes us a, a child of God. Born again into the family of God. Yes. So then we also see John looks at Gaius in the truth whom I love in the truth. And he uses the word beloved four times. In verse number one, then in verse number two, beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper. First, verse one, well beloved, yes. Look down at verse number five. Beloved, thou doest faithfully whatsoever thou doest. Look down at verse 11. Beloved, follow not that which is evil. So he uses it four times here. Gaius, he is a commendable spirit. I mean, a commendable Christian. If you want to write that down, number one, he has a great commendable spirit about him. Uh, he is the one that you want to be. And, and the third one is the one you want to be. And we're going to study all three of them. But uh, Gaius has a love letter that is written to him from a Christian pastor to a commendable Christian man. Now in verse number 2, it's a common greeting. It says there, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prosper. So it's kind of like, I hope you're feeling better. I hope you're feeling well. I hope you're doing well. That's the kind of greeting this was. 
And notice what John wishes for when he addresses Gaius. He says, I want you to have the same kind of help physically as you have spiritually. And boy, there's a definitely a connection between the two. If you are feeling good spiritually, it will flow over into your life physically. And if you are feeling terrible physically, it will flow over into your spiritual life. We're not close to God. We have to stay close to God. But John, he is paying Gaius a tremendous compliment. He is saying, I hope that you'll be just as well off on the outside as you are on the inside because I can look in your heart and see the Lord Jesus there. What a great compliment. John is talking about the importance of maintaining a great inner spiritual life, keeping our souls strong so it can affect every part of our body. I have watched Christian people down through the years and I have watched physically the way that their bodies are and I've watched those who are in deep sin and there's a big, big difference. Living for Jesus will help you in many, many different ways. Somehow, if you unlock the mysterious keys in the Bible, God blesses you with physical help and we know some people would say, well, there's a lot of teaching today that if you're not healthy and wealthy, then you're not a Christian. That's called the social gospel. It's a whole school of teaching called the health and wealth gospel. It goes around and uses this verse as its basis. And so John is not really saved that because in essence, you could have a whole lot of money and be the most ungodly person in the world. Just because a person has money and wealth does not mean that's a, that's a spiritual person. I think God wants us to be well. I think he wants us to do well. They, that may not be an indication of God's blessings on our life. I know more people who were blessed financially who got away from the Lord than I do those who were serving the Lord and they were blessed financially. Because sometimes if we're not careful, it's like a good man I heard about. God had blessed this man. He started tithing on $100 a week. Well, he kept working hard, building his business. He went up to $1,000 a week. And he was paying tithes on it every week. $100, he'd pay $10. $1,000, he'd pay $100. And then it went up to $10,000. Man, God was just seemed like opening doors for this man. And finally... The day came when he made a million dollars in one week. And he looked at the preacher and he said, Preacher, I can't tithe anymore. That's too much money for me to be tithing on. And the preacher said, Well, let's get down on our knees and pray about this. And they got down on their knees and he said, Now, Lord, please help him to go back to $100 a week so he can start tithing again. He said, Hold it, wait a minute right there. <laughs> I see the light. I see the light. So sometimes we can be so blessed financially that we can get away from God. I had a couple years ago, and boy, they were on fire for the Lord. We led them to Christ, and uh, boy, they were doing so well, bringing people in the church. And I still remember the day I missed them in church. I went to see them. We'll be back, preacher. We're coming this week. They didn't come back. I went the next week to see them, and I noticed there's a brand new boat in the yard. And I asked them, I said, did you get you a new boat? Oh, yeah, I've got a new boat. When you been going out? Well, I hate to say it, but Sunday's the only day we can go. I said, well, you better, you better put the Lord first. I said, because God has a right over what we do. Amen. We are bought with a price. Therefore, we need to glorify God with our body and our spirit. And they never did get back, and it cost them a lot, and I hate to say it. And I love the family, and if I'd seen them today, I'd hug their neck. But you cannot take the things of the world and put them in front of God because it's never going to work out well. Amen. John says, I want you to be in health. I want you to know it's important to take care of the physical body, the body that God gives us. But then he says, the main focus of all of it is the spiritual body, being right with the Lord. Make sure you keep that inner life the way it ought to be. Stay on fire for God. Stay close to God. Let everything you do in your life glorify the Lord Jesus himself. That's what Gaius was. Look at verse number three. 
For I rejoice greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee, or you, even as thou walkest in the truth. Yes, was a, a living, walking example of what Christianity is all about. I mean, think about this man. How much time this past week have we spent studying the truth? That's what he did. He studied the Bible. This man knew the Bible. He was anchored in the Word of God. Every little doctrine was not going to blow him off course. Why? Woo! He had the Word of God leading him and guiding him and showing him the right way to go. And when you're anchored in the Word of God, you're on safe ground. Amen. Very good. Have we spent five minutes a week? Have we spent five minutes a day? Have we spent 10, 15, 30 minutes? Whatever we spend in the Word of God is not wasted time. It will some way, somehow, take the bad out of our life and it will put the good in our life and it is sharper than any two-edged sword. And so now we see this pastor. He is thrilled to see this congregation and this young man, Gaius. He's excited because why? He is serving the Lord. He is getting in the Word of God. He is listening and hearing good preaching and teaching. Boy, it's building him up. And he's becoming a strong Christian yes. in the Lord. Then when we think next, in verses 5 through 8, John specifically commends him. Notice in verse number 5. Beloved, thou doest whatsoever thou doest, do it to the brethren and to the strangers. For it is a faithful work this man's doing, which hath borne witness of thy charity or your love before the church. Whom, if thou bring forward on their journey after a godly sort, thou shalt do well. Because that for his name's sake, the Lord's sake, they went forward, taking nothing of the Gentiles. We therefore ought to receive such, that we might be fellow helpers in the truth. Now the background to this, in those days the Christian evangelists and preachers traveled, winning from church, they're going from church to church. They didn't have the Holiday Inns, they didn't have the Hilton's. They didn't have the Howard Johnsons and all the other uh, hotels, the La Quintas, and you name them, they're out there. They didn't have those. They had these inns, and these little inns were filthy and dirty, and they were infected with fleas and varmints of all description, and there was a lot of immorality that went on in those inns, and that just was not a desirable place for a preacher to stay. And because of that, the Christian families of the church would open their homes up to these traveling preachers. John commends Gaius for doing just that. Gaius, I want to commend you. You've been opening up your home. You've been a gracious host. You have extended your Christian hospitality. And your manner is worthy of God. Yes. Woo! This is a man who's on fire for God who would just welcome a preacher into his house and probably talk to him until he couldn't talk anymore, asking him questions about the Bible. Yes. I love to talk about the Bible. Yes. Answer questions. Ask questions. Somebody knows something you don't know. Somebody knows something I don't know. I just like to ask the question and try to find out. Amen. There's no other book like it. It's a treasure book. The more you study it, the more treasure you get out of it. So John is saying here in verse number 7 that it was the responsibility of the Christian believers to support the Christian worker so they don't have to make appeals for, for money from the lost world and from the Gentiles. They can devote their time and talent and treasure into serving Jesus Christ and Him alone. Supported by God's people. Then notice verse number 6 which have borne witness of thy charity before the church, whom if thou bring forward on their journey after the godly sword, thou shalt do well. He says this is the godlike thing to do, to be good to those who come in to minister. Yes. Then in verse number 8, we therefore ought to receive such, that we might be fellow helpers in the truth. I mean, when we receive Christian workers, and we have a part of their ministry, and we send money to missionaries across the world as well as in the areas of our own uh, locality here. It is a ministry that we can help others on the other side of the world complete. And they need people to back them up and they need churches to back them up. And that's why I thank God for every 
God called missionary out there on the foreign fields seeking the lost, winning them to Jesus Christ, and I love to support missions as well. Amen. They need our help. Now, when you read that word receive, we ought to receive such. That means to underwrite them. Here's the idea to foot the bill. Every time you help support the work of the Lord, you're having a part in the salvation of souls, whether it be here at Grace Baptist Church, whether it be in Russia, whether it be in Asia, Africa, whether it be in the military or the children's homes, wherever we're supporting missions, thank God there's people there that need that support, and they need the help of God's people to carry on what they're doing. That's right. Brother Jim, the Lord's making a testify to that. When you're out there on the foreign land, probably gets lonely. Not a whole lot of people around you building you up. Thank God you've got the Lord with you. Right. He'll always stick with you. People will thank you in heaven for supporting the work of the Lord here in this church. And I want to thank all of you for the support you give our church family. It's a blessing to be able to minister and have the doors open and have the air on and make it comfortable for people who like to come in and even open the door and, and show the message on the internet and out in the parking lot. I think that's great. Get the message out any way you can to every person possible. Amen. Woo! That's what our mission is. So John says to this first Christian Gaius, Gaius, you are a well-beloved, commendable Christian. You are a blessing to everybody. And I want to be that kind of Christian, don't you? I believe he sets a good example. Number two, Diotrephes. You might want to put a note beside him. He's the cantankerous Christian. Have you ever met anybody kind of cantankerous? Oh, yeah. Hard to get along with? Yeah. Always got a chip on the shoulder. That's Diotrephes. Look at verse number nine. I write it to the church, but Diotrephes, who loveth to have the preeminence among them, he receiveth us not. Wherefore, if I come, I'm going to remember his deeds, which he doeth, pratting against us. The word pratting carries the idea gossiping against the apostle John. Pratting against us with malicious words and not content therewith. Neither doth he himself receive the brethren and forbidding them that would and casting them out of the church. Could you imagine a man who's jumping on people for letting the preacher stay at their house? Or the missionary who comes in to stay and he's running them off as quick as they could. John said, Stop it! And he wouldn't listen to John. John said, you just wait. I'd like to have been there when that happened. I'd like to have seen what John said and how the Octopus replies to him because John was a God called Apostle of God had the power of God on him. Who is Diotrephes? Well, his name was common among the Greek upper class. So you can kind of get an idea. He was kind of high-minded. He was uh, what you would call thinking that he was better than everybody else, a little bit conceited. And he thought he was it. And when he came to the Lord, he was accustomed to being in the spotlight and getting his way. And so he tries to run the whole church. That's what he's doing. I'll run you out. If you don't like it, you can hit the door. John said, stop it. He wouldn't stop it. Have you ever met such a person? Sure, they're around us. They have to be first in everything. They're going to be number one. They're going to run this. They're going to tell everybody how to do that. Diotrephes is trying to run the whole show and the work of the Lord was being hindered and kept from being what it could have been in a local situation because of a Diotrephes filled with pride, filled with himself, and he wants to be the top dog of all times. So sad. Colossians 1.18 says, Christ is the one who's supposed to have the preeminence. It's not the preacher, it's not the deacon, it's not the Sunday school teacher, it's Jesus Christ. He's the one that's supposed to have the love. He's the one that's supposed to be lifted up. He said, if I be lifted up, woo, I'll draw all men unto me. Thank God, Jesus Christ. 
why has the Lord blessed us at this church? Well, I know one reason he's blessed us is because Jesus Christ is the one that gets the preeminence around here. He's number one, amen? amen. And he always has and he always will be. Yes. Right. He's the one that deserves it. Amen. There's no big shots or little shots around here. Amen. We're all, thank God, if you know Christ, a child of God, and you've got Jesus Christ as your Savior, you're in the family of God. So therefore, we don't need to be bossing one another around, telling one another how you're supposed to do this and do that. Let the Spirit of God move in the life of the person, and things will get done. Amen. How does a diatrophies get into a church? Well, I'll tell you how to do it. They're real sneaky. They slide in as if the church is not led, if the church was not led by some deeply spiritual individuals who can discern between good and bad. He'll wiggle into a key position of leadership, and once he begins to throw his weight around, he won't stop. It'll just get worse and worse. Every time. This Diotrephes wouldn't even accept the authority of John. Diotrephes went around the church pratting. Again, look at verse 9. I wrote unto the church, but Diotrephes who loveth to have the preeminence among them receiveth thus not. Verse number 10, Wherefore, if I come, I'm going to remember his deed. Praying, underline that if you will, praying against us with malicious, gossiping words. In the Greek language, the word praying means a water bubble. <laughs> a water bubble is just water around nothing. It's an empty bubble. And that's all he was. No diatrophy. He nothing but a water bubble. Bubble. He just pops and right. tries to make a lot of noise. Dr. Fees, he was a gossip. He was a blabber. He was a malicious man with empty words. Insecure. That's his problem. He's insecure in who God made him to be. He doesn't have to keep people out of the church. He doesn't have to be mean to other people. He doesn't have to always get his way. That's what he was doing. Don't be a Dr. Fees. Don't have to be first, friend. If I can't be the president, I'm not going to play. If I can't get my way in the sport, you're not using my basketball. <laughs> if you don't play by my rules, my football stays with me. I've never seen that happen before. I've seen it happen so many times. A little power in the heart and the life of a prideful Christian is a dangerous, dangerous thing. That's the way he was. I can't get my way. Bless God, y'all can this sleep. And I'm going to stay here. Right. <laughs> I think it should have been the other way around. Because God's not mocked. And God won't stand for that. Isn't it just a blessing to see humble Christians yeah. who love God, who have a smile on their face? They're not out to hurt anybody. They're just there to lift you up and pray for you. That's right. Woo! That's the kind of Christian you like to be around. You see old diatrophies coming. You want to turn and go the other way. <laughs> Here's the last one we're done. Demetrius. Demetrius. Found in verses 12, 13, and 14. Notice what we have here. Demetrius hath a good report of all men and of the truth itself. Yea, and we shall also bear record. And ye know that our record is true. I had many things to write, but I will not with ink and pen write unto thee, but I trust I shall shortly see thee. We shall speak face to face. Peace be unto thee. Our friends salute thee. Greet the friends by name. I would put beside Demetrius a consistent Christian. He is a consistent Christian who just kept doing the right thing all the time. Gaius was a commendable Christian. But old Diotrephes, when you think about him, he is nothing but a cantankerous Christian. But here's the last one. Let's look at him real quickly as we finish this up. This man comes into the church and he has a great witness because he was a good report of all men. Even the unsaved spoke well of this man because he was an honest man. This man wanted to get along with people. This man wanted to uplift Christ. This man wanted to be a blessing. Kind of like Gaius. Demetrius, and notice in verse 12, it says there, Demetrius has a good report of all men and of the truth itself. He took the word of God. And let the word of God put it in his life. 
the word of God into the life of Demetrius made him consistent serving Jesus Christ every day of every week of every year of his life. You never read where he went back. He always stayed faithful. That's the kind of Christian I'd like to be, wouldn't you? Walk in the truth, live in the truth, love in the truth, and Jesus is the one that will help us be that kind of a Christian. And he is the only one who can change our life and make it a good report. And when we get saved, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Woo! Thank God all things become new. I'm glad I'm not the same person I was before I got saved. Yeah. I'm glad the Lord's going to work in my life. If you're glad for that, give him a big amen. Ready? Amen. amen. Thank you. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Charles, if you'd like to come. Looking at three simple men here in this little passage. Only 14 verses, but what a truth. And I would like to be that one who's a blessing. Not that one who's pratting around. Not that empty bubble that just always trying to hurt somebody. No, that's not our job. Our job is to be a blessing. Our job is to be a help. Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. Yes, he did. And maybe tonight you'd say, Preacher, pray for me. That's what I want to be. I want to be that Christian that loves God, that helps those around me. I just need his help at times. I need his strength. And I'll be glad to pray for you. You know what I like You'd slip my hand up all around the room. Hands are lifted everywhere. Father, you've seen our hands. You know our hearts. We ask that you would just take uh, control of this invitation. Lord, use it for your honor and for your glory. Father, we ask that you would just help us to be as Gaius was, a commendable Christian, someone who loves others, someone who loves Christ, and someone who loves the truth of the Word of God. And Father, help us to always avoid that bad attitude because it always gets us in trouble and it pulls us down. We don't need that. Life's short enough as it is. Help us to use every moment for your cause, for your honor, and for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let's stand our feet while heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Looked at a little small passage here in 3 John. We talked about three different men. Maybe you want to come down and say, Lord, help me to be like Gaius. Help me to be a commendable Christian. Lord, Lead me and guide me in what you'd have me to do. I just want to draw closer to you. Or maybe if you got a burden on your heart. If you want to be saved tonight, you come. Yes. Whatever the Lord leads you to do. Heads are bowed. Eyes are closed. Christians are praying. Oh, yeah. come today, he may come tomorrow. Let us be looking for him and found faithful. God bless you. Amen. Glory to his name. Amen. Thank you so much for coming tonight. Hope you have a great week. Jim, if you would, you dismiss us in prayer at this time. Brother Jim. My Father, God, we thank you for the messages we can take home with us. We can live with us. We can approve ourselves with that. And oh, Lord Jesus, the people that's not serving you, I pray you touch their hearts. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for salvation. And help us, Lord, bring us back to church at the right time. Help us to worship you in spirit and truth.